All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to use the slope deflection method to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram and find the reactions of this indeterminate beam. So when we look at it, if we count up all of the unknown reactions, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we have three equations of equilibrium. So this beam is two degrees statically indeterminate. Um, this beam is also two degrees kinematically indeterminate. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically just, uh, if you look at all the reactions, any time that you have a reaction that you don't know its displacement or slope, that's basically one degree of kinematic indeterminacy. So here, when we def when we load the structure, we know that the uh, slope and displacement at A is going to be zero because of the rigid connection. We know that the, the displacement at B and the displacement at C is going to be zero, but we don't know what those slopes are going to be. So that's where basically our two degrees of kinematic indeterminacy come from. And uh, you're going to see later in this problem that we're just going to be working with two unknowns, and that's because of that second degree. Um, but we're basically just going to use a little 2 by 2 matrix and solve, and uh, it's, that, it's not really anything to be too worried about. Okay, so to begin the slope deflection method, the first thing that we do is we separate out each span from its reactions, and then we want to label on the internal end moments at each of those spans that we've now virtually separated, and this will become, so this will become the internal moment, we call it A, B, basically it's at A looking at B, or it's at A on the span A, B. Uh, this internal end moment is going to be M, B, A. This guy here is going to be M, B, C, and this one here is going to be M, C, B. Cool, the other thing that we can do here is uh, while we're at it, we can draw on the unknown and shear forces as well. So we'll call this V, A, and we'll call this V, so this is V, B, 1. This is just the shear just to the left of the support. Um, we'll call it on this band, this will be V, B, 2. And then at the end here, this will be V, C. So we don't really need the shears for now, but we're going to come back to these in the third part of this video. So actually, I, I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm going to split this, this example into three videos because it's actually a really long example, uh, but we'll come back to this stuff in a, in a later video. But for now, just the most important thing is that we've drawn on our end moments and that we've drawn them all clockwise. You'll notice everyone is intentionally drawn clockwise. Um, that is because with the slope deflection method, basically the equation that we use depends on these things being clockwise for it to work properly. So when you're doing this, always draw these on clockwise. Okay, the other thing that we can just acknowledge is that at the reactions that we're going to have, um, we're going to have AY and a moment, MA. Here we're at, uh, at B, we're just going to have a reaction that's BY. And here at C, we're just going to have a reaction that is CY. And this is actually going to be equal and opposite to the shear force, um, the end shear force there. AY is going to be equal and opposite to that. MA will be equal and opposite to the internal moment. And BY here will actually be the sum of these two shears. And again, we'll see that in part three of the video. So the next thing that we do now is we redraw these same spans as if they had fixed ends. So this is just a hypothetical case, but for a beam that has this exact same geometry, um, or basically for any type of beam that has two fixed ends, you'll find in the back of your structural analysis book um, tables there. They're called like fixed end, uh, fixed end force tables or fixed end moment tables. And you'll see situations like this where you have a span with two fixed ends and a point load right in the middle. You'll see another entry in the table where there's like a beam with two fixed ends and a distributed load the whole way across. There'll usually be a couple of these. And they'll be labeling on moments, ends, end moments like these, and they call them fixed end moments. So they call this one FEM. And in our case, we're going we're gonna to give this a subscript AB. This is just the fixed end moment that's on the left-hand side of a span with this single point load. Uh, this is going to be FEM BA. This one here is going to be FEM BC. And this one here is going to be FEM C. B. So if we just come down and give ourselves a little bit more space to work with, um, the tables, when you read these from the back of your textbook, you're going to find that for the left-hand side, if you've drawn on the moment here going clockwise, that uh, FEMAB is going to be equal to negative PL over 8. So this negative sign is just saying that at the end moment in this hypothetical situation that's, uh, that's not actually happening, um, but if it was like this, it would be going counterclockwise at the end. That's that negative sign. Um, and then you also have FEMBA. Uh, and this one would just be positive PL over 8. Again, where P is that point load, L is the length of that span. 
And then same thing from the tables, we'd have FEM, BC for the left-hand case of uh, one with a distributed load the whole way across, a constant distributed load. Uh, this would be negative WL squared over 12. And then FEM, uh, CB would be from the table, just positive WL squared over 12. So if we plug in our actual values, we get these values in kilonewton meters. And the reason we did all this stuff is because we want to plug this into our slope deflection equation, which we got right here. So these each uh, will respectively go in one at a time uh, when we solve the slope deflection equation basically four times for this problem. Now, when we look at this mij, so we're basically, we're going to run this for uh, the moment ab, the moment ba, the moment, uh, they're all right here. Um, BC and then CB and basically each time we use this we just swap all of the I's for the first letter we're looking at and all the J's for the second letter we're looking at. Um, in this case if EI is different in different spans of the beam watch out for that. This is the length of each span respectively and then these are the angles. So uh, this, this uh, term in here has to do with settlement of reactions and so if we don't have any settlement which we don't in this problem then this goes to zero and our slope deflection equation does simplify a little bit. So we'll be working with the slightly reduced version in here. Um, now also a lot of this stuff is going to cancel out or basically go to zero. So when we look at the actual original problem here, um, we can make some observations because when we look at uh, reaction A here, we already know that the, the slope right at A is going to be zero because of that fixed end connection. So theta A is going to be equal to zero and uh, the end moment at C, the internal end moment at C is going to be equal to zero. So we have M C, which is equal to the internal moment C B, which is equal to M C B, is going to be equal to zero because yeah, it's just the end of a, a, uh, a span that's on a roller there. So there won't be any internal moments building up. And then the other observation that we can make is that here, right in the middle here, basically above the reaction at, uh, at B, the, the sum of these moments has to be equal to zero. So MBA plus MBC has to equal zero. So MBA plus MBC must equal zero because if these don't, if these aren't equal and opposite, then this point is not going to be in static equilibrium. This thing is gonna be like rotating and uh, that, that's clearly not what's happening in this case. And so we know that, uh, that those have to sum up to zero and then also in this problem, we're saying that there is no settlement of any kind, so all possible settlements basically are going to be equal to zero. All right, so let's bring that down here, um, just like that. All right, so I think we're gonna we're gonna stop the video here. Um, this is gonna be part one of three in the next. So we've already set up the whole problem now. We've basically got our observations. We've got our slope deflection equation ready to go. Um, we're going to move into video two and we're going to do all of the math. Uh, basically, we're just going to plug and chug in this equation a whole bunch um, and then solve for our unknown angles. And then in video three, we're going to draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and solve for the reactions. So, uh, guys, I'll see you in video two and we'll keep going with the same problem.